In this video, we're going to take a look at function arguments. Let's create a simple function. I'm going to use the def keyword, and then I'll make up a name like greet. And so we've got the round brackets, the colon, and I'll make this function just print hello. Now let's create a main function. So def main, round brackets, colon. And this is where we put the code that basically starts off our program. So for the moment, let's just call greet in there. And then at the bottom of the program, we're going to run main, we're going to call main. So we call main here. Main simply calls the greet function. That's all it does. And the greet function is going to print hello. Let's run it and see what it does. So it just says hello. Now, supposing in main, we do some stuff before we call the greet function, namely, I'm going to ask the user what their name is. Let's say name equals input. What is your name? And we'll create a sort of prompt here for them to type at. So I run the program. It says, what is your name? Then it says, hello. Now it would be nice if I got this greet function to print hello and then my name. But the problem is, how do I get name from here in main to here in the greet function where I can actually print it out usefully? And we do this with something called function arguments. So an argument, as I've said previously, is a piece of data that you pass to a function. And we have been using those. We passed here, for example, an argument to the input function. What if we could pass an argument to the greet function, which we could then use inside greet? Let's, in here in the round brackets, type a variable name, which I'm going to make up. Let's call it username. So this is literally just the name of a variable that I've literally just made up. And typing variable names within these round brackets here actually creates this variable. But now greet expects us to pass some data to it because of this. So I can pass name in here. A name will end up in this variable here, so we can actually print it out. Let's put a space there and then do plus username. So you can think of these round brackets as a bit like a kind of a shoot. You're getting name here and then you're throwing it down the chute. And where does it appear? It appears here. So it lands in this variable here. And then we can actually use it. Let's just run this so you can see what it does. What is your name, John? And it says, hello, John. So this variable, username, it has nothing to do with this name variable. It's a totally different variable, but it ends up referring to the same piece of data, which is whatever name the user enters at the prompt. I could also call this name. I could write name here if I want, and then I have to write name there. But it's important to realize that this bit of code here is actually creating a new variable called name, which has nothing to do with this variable called name. There's no connection between them. Yes, these variables are both called name, but they're not the same variable. A kind of connection is made only in as much as we are passing some data to the greet function which the name variable at this point refers to, and that ends up in this name variable here. Let's change this back to username, because I think to start with, that's less confusing to have different names for these two variables. In fact, every variable has a scope. That is, it has a region or area of the program where the variable actually exists. So this name variable here is going to exist within this main function. And this username variable exists within this greet function. And outside of that, they don't exist. So if I put some code here and try to write print name, I'm just going to get an error because outside of this function, name does not exist. That's outside of the scope of this name variable. We can only refer to it inside the function. So if I put some code into this function code block, then of course we can refer to it. 
So let's get rid of this. And the thing to do with, with this, I think, is just type it out and get it working as usual. And you can play around with it a bit. You could try defining another function, see if you can pass some different piece of data to a different function, maybe, whatever you like. But the important thing is to type this out and actually see it working after you've typed it yourself. You've been watching a free sample from my Python and machine learning for complete beginners course. I'm uploading enough videos from the start of the course to get you started with Python and machine learning. The full course is absolutely massive. If you're interested in it, please click the link in the description. The complete course covers not only basic Python, but also some fairly advanced Python, even some desktop programming stuff, and then goes on to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Until next time, happy coding.